Hey everyone, I'm Justin from XDP and I'm joined by Luke from SNS Diesel. Today we're going to be talking about the SNS DCR conversion kit. Stay tuned. Luke, thank you so much for joining us and telling us more about the CP4 to DCR conversion. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Always a pleasure to be able to speak with you. Now, in previous videos, we really dove into and talked about the CP4 fuel pumps. Luke, for those who are new to the CP4 series, what can cause these pumps to fail? So the, that base pump is used in a variety of late model engines, some of the common rail uh, engine platforms like the LML Duramax, which is 2011 to 16, the 67 Power Stroke, which is 2011 to current. And then it's also in a variety of other vehicles like Volkswagen, BMWs, uh, and some other applications too. But most of what our customers and our market is, is the pickup market. Um, and those pumps, to answer your question, they can work fine for a long period of time if everything's perfect. But unfortunately, just the base architecture design of that pump is very sensitive and uh, these trucks don't live in a perfect world and sometimes not an easy world with how they're used and fuel quality and things like that. So unfortunately the CB4s just kind of have a glass jaw and it doesn't take much to fail one. And when they do fail, they create lots of collateral damage in the rest of the system because they create metal debris that then contaminates your injectors and the rest of the system that becomes a very costly and usually long downtime. Yeah, and I could share from personal experience myself. I have a 67 Ford and had a CP4 scare about a year ago or so. So I went out and got one of your Gen 2 CP4 bypass kits, and I feel confident that my fuel system is protected, but at the same time, I also know that these kits don't completely prevent the CP4 from failing. So when I heard about your DCR conversion, it got me really excited. How is this conversion a more permanent solution to the nightmares that I even experienced with the CP4 in my truck? Yeah, so you did, uh, you know, the best thing that was available there for a lot of years, which you'd, several years ago we developed the, the CP4 bypass kit or the disaster prevention kit is what it's usually dubbed as. And that uh, still leaves the original CP4 in place, but it at least changes the fuel flow paths uh, that it blocks the debris from being able to contaminate the rest of the system. So the pump might go down, but at least it doesn't take everybody else down with it. So it saves you several thousand dollars in unnecessary repair bills. That was the best thing available for a lot of years. Up until um, the last couple of years, we've been working on uh, co-development with Stanodyne. Pure Power basically identified a different high pressure pump base that we could use. So the Ford is unique in that it's a V8, but the valley of the V and the space claim there where the pump is, uh, is pretty tight. On an LML Duramax, for example, we've had uh, CP3 conversion kits out there for years where we convert it, um, get rid of the CP4 and convert it to a CP3 base pump, but that's a larger pump and it'll fit in a Duramax, but it doesn't fit in a Ford. So there hasn't been a solution for the Fords for years, just purely because there hasn't been room for that pump to fit for anything other than a CP4 basically to fit because it's um, very compact. So uh, until here recently, we worked with Standardine Pure Power to adapt this DCR pump, which is a current production, a variant of that pump has been in production for several years. There's lots and lots of them out there on heavy duty engine applications and other parts of the world, um, just never here. And, it, and uh, it needed some changes and adaptations to be able to work with the Ford. So we've been working on that for a while and we released that here in the middle of this year, middle of 23 is when we uh, went ahead and, and uh, launched production. And it's been a great, lots of good customer feedback and reception. Everybody's excited about finally having a permanent solution. So the the high level is, you know, previously you had the disaster prevention kit that would keep the rest of the system from getting contaminated. And now you've got just a complete pump replacement where you get rid of the problem child altogether and get a more robust, more reliable pump in there. Now, why did you decide to go with the DCR pump instead? And what are some of the differences between the two? Yeah, so the CP4 um, has, it, it's kind of the lightweight, you know, cost-effective version of a high-pressure pump. There's a lot of design differences. It's an aluminum housing. 
it's lightweight, it's easier to make, and there's less parts really. It's, it's a roller, it's a metal to metal cam on a steel roller. And so it doesn't take much either for that to turn 90 degrees and start cutting a groove or for that roller to just seize and start skidding. Um, so it, if there's any kind of little bit of debris, even like high RPM fluctuations, it, it really doesn't take much. And that, that joint, that interface, which is critical, can um, fail. So the DCR internals are just completely different. And um, we've got some displays made of that to help, you know, show the internals of the pump basically, but it uses a, an eccentric cam and a big bushing surface. And it's just a lot more heavy duty bottom end uh, construction. And so uh, that helps to spread out the load of the force of the pistons that are pumping the fuel because it's all running at high pressures. You know, we're talking 30, 40,000 PSI in some of these cases. Um, and uh, that helps to spread that load out. And it's just kind of a more heavy duty construction down low. And also the flow path of the DCR is different than the CP4 where um, the, it doesn't feed the bottom end of the pump and then the top end so that like the bottom end of the CP4 can contaminate the rest of it. So overall, there's just a lot of key design base design changes that are very significant, very critical to get it where it's a reliable, robust pump that can take a beating if it needs to. We've even seen that recently. Uh, we had a field test truck that was an early early truck that we were doing prototype testing with and everything. And the customers had it for a few months driving it and uh, come to find out he ended up getting a bunch of water in his fuel and didn't know it. And none of us knew it, but uh, he had a lot of water in the fuel, had a lot of rust in the system. The filters themselves were rusting because it had metal spin on filters instead of the regular factory ones. And so there was lots of water, lots of rust, lots of contamination in the system. And, um, but luckily, they had a DCR on board and the DCR, even though it showed signs of damage and debris inside because of eating all that contamination, it lived just fine. And we actually took it apart, inspected it, put it back together and put it back on the truck just to keep beating the same pump that already got abused. But a CP4 would have, would have died a painful death and taken everybody else down with it. Well, I'm glad to hear that the DCR was able to salvage the fuel system in that particular truck. Uh, another difference I noticed as well was the physical size between the two pumps. Will that affect fit and function? And is there also any noticeable drivability differences? From the beginning, the, the, the prime design target was to make this a true drop in where it, it, from the driver's perspective, you don't have to do any other aftermarket changes. You don't have to do any tuning. It's basically a drop in um, replacement. So uh, you don't have to have other alterations to go along with it basically. So that's been the number one design intent and that's, that's what we've done with it. The pump itself is a kind of different shape and, and size than the CP4, but it still fits in the footprint that it needs to. Um, it, the kit comes with uh, an adapter plate and some other things to, to bolt it up. Um, but in general, it's, it's a great drop in replacement. It's, it's intended to, to be, you know, basically a, a seamless transition where you don't notice really any difference. The pump is a little bit larger displacement actually than the factory pump. Um, the, the pump curve and output and performance, it is designed to match the factory pump. So that's how you get away with not having to do any tuning and, and it acting like a stock pump. But it, uh, some of the feedback we've gotten from the market is guys say that their truck starts faster, which actually is logical because the pump at that low RPM like that, it actually is able to build pressure quicker um, than the stock pump. But in general, it's intended to be a like for like, just a lot more reliable. But some of the feedback we have gotten is that uh, we've heard guys say it's quieter, it starts faster. Uh, we've actually had a decent amount of guys say they're getting better mileage, but no guarantees on that. That wasn't uh, Generally, they should be about the same, you know, the, the pump's doing its job, which is delivering the fuel to the injectors. But we've had a lot of great feedback um, and a lot of excited customers One to have that peace of mind like you had with your truck, basically putting the, the disaster prevention kit on it. Then you're just kind of like, OK, if it dies, it dies. But at least it's going to be a few thousand less than it would have been beforehand. And then these guys that go ahead and do the full DCR conversion. They're just, you know, know that they're good to go and they can uh, rest easy. 
Now that we know more about the pump itself, what else comes included in this kit? So in the kit, it's all uh, kitted boxed together. Uh, it comes with the hardware to bolt the pump to the engine, obviously. There's an adapter plate, a small plate to get the bolt pattern correct. And it comes with the high pressure lines that go just from the pump to the rail. And it comes with a low pressure line assembly that goes from the filter to the pump. So uh, it's all a very OE-like drop-in replacement. It's quick connect interfaces um, to the factory connection points like the factory filter or to the return side. So um, if, if anybody's done a CP4 pump replacement, this is very similar to that. It's just, you know, that comes with the, the low pressure and high pressure lines as well to interface to the new pump. And when installing this kit, would any modifications or tuning changes be required? Nope, um, really nothing else. It's, it's very similar to just a regular CP4 replacement, um, except for, uh, you know, the, the, the extra low pressure line assembly that goes with it and the high pressure lines, but those all would come off anyways with a CP4. So no other tuning, you know, you just kind of drop it in and go quick connects where it needs to go. You still like any pump replacement, you have to remove the gear. The pump is, um, you know, has a gear bolted to it. And so the gear comes off, pump comes out and a new pump goes back in. So very similar to a factory CP4 uh, replacement. So if the guy's got experience with that, um, you know, it's very similar. We've had, we, we spent a lot of time on our installation instructions and we kind of go over the top of some of that sometimes and we have printed instructions in the in the box and everything and uh, we've got a lot of good feedback on that too with a very thorough printed instructions any other components need to be replaced as well such as injectors or other parts found in fuel contamination kits it depends on whether you waited too long to do the dcr conversion or not uh, for the guy that waited just a little bit too long and the cp4 had failed beforehand then you're talking needing injectors needing rails needing high pressure lines got to drop the tank clean all the metal out of the tank, uh, new supply pump, you know, all that kind of stuff, the full deal if you waited too long and you didn't have a disaster prevention kit installed. If you did have one of our DPKs installed, then you can just replace the pump only. Um, but for somebody that's doing this as a preventative maintenance item, which is the ideal, that's what we want people to do. Don't wait until it's too late because then it is very painful and you're not really saving yourself anything other than hopefully preventing it a second time need to get this done before it's too late, then um, there's nothing else that needs done. There's a some model years, there's a gasket, a vacuum pump gasket, that's uh, the vacuum pump has to come off to get to the gear that holds the pump on. Uh, but other than that, there's really nothing else to do. Like say, ideally you do this earlier, you know, plan the downtime to go ahead and get it installed and then know you've got reliability instead of waiting until rolling the dice until it's too late, and then you might end up having to have a lot of extra parts. Well, hopefully the do-it-yourselfer does catch this on time as opposed to too late. Uh, can they install this themselves in their driveway or garage, or should they consult their mechanic? Yeah, it really just depends on the level of mechanical aptitude, I guess, of the individual. Um, there's nothing super complex about it or extremely difficult, but it is a, you know, it is a, few to several hour job depending on experience and tools so somebody that's not used to working on things at all ought to leave it to a professional somebody who has you know done a decent amount of their own wrenching and has has got a full set of tools and is pretty confident in their abilities there's nothing super complex and there's not a lot of specialty tools required or anything like that like i say there's really nothing unique about the dcr we designed it to not require anything really specialty or unique you know, it helps to have like fan removal tools and some of that kind of thing um, that you have to get the fan off to get out of the way to get to the front of the gear. But that's not unique to the DCR. That's just uh, a feature of how those engines are designed and what it takes to get the pump out. All right. Awesome. And ultimately, how much is this kit going to be able to save truck owners? <laughs> we hear a, a range of cost of what it takes when they have CP4 failures. It generally is in the ten dollars to $15,000 range is about, um, you know, the, the exposure or the risk. We had a customer recently that um, told us that he had a failure a few years ago on a truck that was, should have been within warranty, but they denied warranty 
Um, that's a key point really for customers. Uh, with the fuel system in particular, warranties often get denied um, because of what they'll claim fuel contamination. And so even people that are in warranty, ideally, if they had a failure, they'd get taken care of, you know, by the dealer. Or they wouldn't have to be out of pocket anything. But we hear over and over again, sometimes legitimately, that there actually was fuel, uh, gasoline or death or water or something like that in the fuel. And it caused a contamination and a failure. The factory is not going to cover that. A lot of times, you know, they'll claim contamination, sometimes even if it's not legit because they've seen it before and they know that it's an easy excuse. But customer in particular had a truck. It was a year or two old. It was on warranty, had a CP4 failure. Um, the dealer denied the warranty, said that it had contamination. I'm not sure if it really did or not, but he said it cost $18,000 to get back on the road in his particular case. But usually in that ten to $15,000 range seems to be about where it lands to if you've had a failure to replace everything and get back on the road. So that's where the, the DCR is at 1990 plus wherever labor ends up landing, depending on the individual, uh, is a lot cheaper way to go. And it really depends on how expensive downtime is to people. You don't want to be on the side of the road unexpectedly and have a lot of extra expense or the guys that are actually relying on their trucks every day for their main um, job and, and income, you know, can't, can't afford for a unexpected downtime. The, where these really get expensive too, and we've seen it happen is the pump can fail and the CP4 can fail and seize in a way that it, uh, it actually slips the crank gear. So the pumps can actually, we had one of our trucks do it this way. We were doing abusive testing, failed the CP4 on purpose on a 2021 drove it for several hundred miles with one of our disaster prevention kits on it while the pump was failing. Eventually it failed so bad that the pump seized and the truck wouldn't even turn over. The starter couldn't even crank it over. Um, in some cases when that happens, the pump seizes and it puts so much load on the cam gear that it's driven off of, which then drives off the crank gear that can actually slip the crank gear on the crankshaft. And then your cam and crank are out of time and you end up with valve to piston contact and catastrophic engine damage. So um, if a CP4 fails, it pretty much always wipes out the rest of the system, but you're to some degree almost lucky if you only end up with the ten dollars to $15,000 repair because what can happen is it actually causes a full engine failure. Um, and we're just trying to prevent all of those situations altogether and just get a uh, good, reliable solution in there for guys. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, talking with us more about the SNS DCR conversion. Yep, no problem. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you guys. Stay tuned as in the next video, we'll be installing one of these in our 2011 Super Duty. In the meantime, to find out more information about this kit or to get one for your truck, check out XDP.com.